Dr. Zapia is the Wolf Professor of Translational Research at the University of Montreal. He is also the Chief Scientific Advisor of Unity Biotechnology, a company developing therapeutics to slow or reverse diseases of aging. Professor Zapia's pioneering work in the biology of eye diseases has been widely recognized. His team made significant discoveries implicating deregulation of neuronal metabolism and cellular senescence in retinal vascular diseases such as diabetic retinopathy. Professor Zapia is the recipient of the Alcon Research Institute Senior Investigator Award and the Kogan Award in Vision Research. And with that, let me start the interview. I'm a professor at the University of Montreal where you run a lab on vision health and aging, and also chief scientific officer at Unity Bio, which is focuses on therapies for nascent cells. So welcome to Modern Health Span. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you. So Dr. Zapia, so can you tell us what led you to studying aging and particularly for the aging of eyes? Right. So I was actually, before I started studying aging, I was studying uh, regulation of uh, methylation in cancer cells. And that led me to work on, um, you know, throughout, through the years to work in, uh, uh, in gene therapy. And uh, this was kind of the late 90s, early 2000s. And the best place to develop gene therapy at that point was, was in the eye and probably still is today in the eye. Um, and so this kind of led to, you know, 10 years where I was working in the neuroscience of the retina. And eventually, as uh, I started to, to open my, my own um, lab, uh, we're noticing that a lot of processes that were involved in um, several of these uh, vascular diseases of the eyes, which I'd be happy to go into in, in detail throughout our, our interview, um, we, no we were noticing that they had salient features of accelerated aging. So essentially that you know, we, we had cells in younger individuals that really had these molecular signatures of, of cells that you would see in, in elderly populations. So that's the, the scientific basis of why I got into aging research. Um, the more personal one is that for around 15 years, I had um, this uh, Labrador German Shepherd dog that I walked around with a couple of times a day. And, you know, I couldn't help but notice how quickly he was aging you know, versus my wife, for example, who just doesn't age. And, you know, this, this was a, a pretty interesting um, conundrum I found. So, you know, essentially, why do, why do certain cells or organisms age quicker than others? Um, and so, you know, having, having a, a research lab, uh, I was able to, to start to address some of these questions. Right, which actually brings me to my kind of second question, which kind of taking a step back. So what is your theory of aging? What, uh, you know, do you think it's programmed or is it accumulated damage or something else? Right. Well, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear that there's a program out there. And I, and I think, you know, that's obviously the holy grail is trying to understand what that program is. Um, but I think for as far as what we know, um, a lot of the, the kind of cardinal features of aging are due to, uh, to cellular damage. So essentially, it's an accumulation um, of, uh, of damage uh, due to environmental factors or due to um, you know, stresses that, that are imposed on, on the body uh, throughout several you know, decades of life. So I think there's, there's part of that, but certainly you know, there's, a, there's a, a program that kind of dictates that at one point, you know, a, a certain tissues will, will start to give out. Interesting, right? Yes. Okay. So if we looked at senescent cells, so one of the hallmarks of aging is senescent cells, right? This accumulation of senescent cells. So could you introduce senescent cells? So what are they? Right. Okay. So senescent cells are um, essentially cells that have a, a whole series of of defined uh, signatures or, or that have undergone a process that has brought them to a point where they can no longer divide. And a certain subset of these uh, have a program that produces inflammatory factors called the senescence associated secretory phenotype or the SASP. And essentially um, the SASP is 
a, a, a source of, of systemic inflammation or local tissue inflammation. Um, so that in a nutshell is really, I guess, how you can describe cellular senescence. Now, um, so it's a, it's a consequence of, uh, of a couple of different factors. One uh, very common one is cellular damage, so DNA damage. Um, again, if you get too much uh, uh, oxidation, if you're exposed to, to too much radiation, um, anything that really causes your DNA to, to be damaged uh, triggers the DNA damage response. Um, and this has a tendency to shut down cells that, that are dividing. Um, and another common type of senescence, and this is a, a senescence that we call oncogene senescence, so it's a, a mechanism that is thought to have evolved along with apoptosis, so it's cell death, to essentially limit uh, tumor progression or, or, or cancer growth. Uh, so what happens is the cell has all these checkmark um, inhibitors uh, or processes that uh, kick in when there's too many divisions of a cell. So if the cell starts to divide too rapidly, at one point, we have these programs in our cells that hit the brakes and uh, the cell stops dividing. And that's called oncogene-induced senescence. And again, there's, there's distinct types of features to those cells. But the first time that this process of cellular senescence was uh, described was by um, a fellow called uh, Leonard Hayflick. And what he noticed was, you know, very simple experiment than, than in, the, in the late 50s or 60s, uh, early 60s. And what he showed was that if you start to grow fibroblasts on a dish, and if you start splitting cells, uh, then inadvertently around 50 divisions, those cells would stop dividing. You know, and so many of us would probably not have thought that was an interesting finding, um, you know, but it really launched a whole field of, um, of aging biology, because that, that gave the first idea that there's actually a program, um, like your question, you know, is there a program that behind aging? Um, so there was some, some sort of mechanism in place or program that said, you know, fibroblasts don't divide after 50 divisions. So we now know, you know, after 50 years or <laughs> took a bit less than 50 years of investigation to get to the conclusion, but we know that that, that phenomenon is due to telomere attrition. Um, so essentially we kind of now with our more modern molecular tools, we can, we can address some of those early questions, but um, the whole idea that there's a program that tells the cell to stop dividing kind of like a clock that after 50 divisions, you're, you're done um, was really groundbreaking um, and, and launched the whole field really. Okay. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.